There are a couple of concepts that I didn't get to in my introductory video that I'd like to touch on in this brief video. One of them is talking about this area up here, the pharynx and the larynx, okay? So when air is coming in, uh, it is supposed to go into your nose, and then down the pharynx, it goes through the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, the laryngopharynx, and then it makes another turn. Now we'll be talking about why the body um, has been designed in this way, has evolved in this way. Um, it is not for efficiency, it's for adequately cleaning and warming and adding humidity to the air. But one of the strange uh, glitches about the human respiratory tract is that the air that we inhale crosses paths with the food that we swallow, right? Food is meant to go in through the oral cavity, goes through the mouth, then it goes down the oropharynx, laryngopharynx, and then it's supposed to go down the esophagus, right? So one of the conveniences of this is that if our nose is really stuffed up from uh, some kind of a um, cold, we can breathe through our mouths. The real disadvantage of this is that if we're careless, if we inhale while we're swallowing food, then we can send the food into our larynx and that will cause choking. If we're lucky, we just cough a little bit and everything's okay. If we're unlucky, then a particle, a wad of food could get lodged there and, uh, and we need the Heimlich to remove it. So the pharynx is a part of the respiratory tract that is shared with the digestive tract that we will be getting to. What's the job of the larynx? The job of the human larynx is to be um, the gateway between that dangerous area of the pharynx and our windpipe. Um, but for humans, the larynx is particularly important for making sounds. Um, it is the most important part of our ability to speak and to sing. The epiglottis is the part of the larynx that is the most important um, guardian for the larynx. And every time you swallow, your larynx gets pulled upward by those extrinsic muscles. And the way that that happens, yeah, okay. The way that that happens is um, here's your epiglottis. And whenever the extrinsic muscles pull your larynx upward, um, then it allows the epiglottis to cover the opening to your larynx and trachea. And then you go back to breathing. And that's why we probably should not be talking while we're chewing. Right. So, oh, one more thing. Uh, we talked about the bronchial tree. And one of the points that I made in passing was that this area called the carina, C-A-R-I-N-A, this area called the carina was a very important landmark in human anatomy. Whenever a physician is placing a breathing tube into a patient, uh, that tube is meant to go here into the trachea and it is crucial that that tube not be pushed down so far that it goes past this area of the carina. If a breathing tube or a tube for anesthesia gets pushed past the carina, it has gone into one of the primary bronchi and then only this lung, whichever lung is being inflated, will be receiving oxygen from that tube um, and the other lung will be collapsing during the time that that tube is in place. So that's one of the reasons why the carina is such an important landmark. Also, when we're looking at patients that may have pneumonia or um, a tumor in their chest or fluid in their pleural space, the carina is an important landmark for looking at x-rays. But I wanna say something else about the structure of the um, primary bronchi in humans. It's not obvious very often from looking at these uh, images, but uh, the structure of the primary bronchi or humans is very asymmetrical. Um, if you are looking down the trachea 
you can look straight down the right primary bronchus. But if you're looking down the trachea, you can't see straight down the left primary bronchus. The left primary bronchus, you gotta take a turn. That's what this image down here on the lower right is. That's an image from Gray's Anatomy. Gray's Anatomy was an anatomy textbook before it was a popular TV show. Um, Gray's Anatomy, uh, this image shows you what it, what you would see if you looked down the trachea with one of those um, fiber optic endoscopes. And you can see you can look straight down the right primary bronchus, but the left primary bronchus, you got to make a turn. Now, uh, I'm not showing you that because you're going to be doing endoscopy. I'm showing you that to explain why when people inhale something that should not have gone down their windpipe, it generally will go down the right primary bronchus. Because if you are Barbie's shoe going down a kid's windpipe, this is what you see. And so Barbie's shoe is gonna take the path of least resistance, go down the right primary bronchus and generally end up down in the right inferior lung lobe, depending on how far it can get there. When a patient has aspirated vomit because of their condition, Again, that vomit is more likely to go down into the right lower lung lobes because of the asymmetry of the human bronchial tree. All right, we'll pick up there at our next video.